What's up world, are you ready to block and load? Well if you're not, too bad, because that's what we're taking a look at right now. And the first thing I'm going to show you is that sometimes the direct approach is quite entertaining. Even if it's not necessarily that uh, effective. Anyways, it's time to take a look at block and load. Now, Block and Load has gone free to play, so it was previously a buy to play game, so it's already got a good amount of uh, setup and a couple other characters, but they got some new ones that just came out that are featured characters. Now, we're not going to go and talk about every single character because there's just too much in terms of each one being slightly different, uh, but I can say, all in all, they are very balanced in terms of what they're doing. They're going to be characters that are better at certain things, like attacking or defending, and they're going to be characters that are good at kind of doing everything. Now, each character has their own uh, special ability and other features, special blocks that they can use. Now, I'll explain a little bit of that later. I'm not going to get too much of the mechanics because that's not as important, but here's a quick little over overview of all of the blocks that are useful for everybody. It's got ice blocks, radars, bombs, glue, bricks, sandbags. I mean, you name it, it's got a lot of stuff. And oh, yeah, they even got some skins. And uh, Yuri the Yeti turned into Yuri the Bear. He is, he is quite Barry. They should call him Barry instead of Yuri at that one. But uh, then they got a couple of skins for everybody. They've got a really good setup already. And the free to play structure is set up to where now you can unlock the characters to play as. They've got uh, quite a few. At, wait, actually, I think they've only got nine. Uh, no, 12. I can't math. Anyways, they've got skins for all of them, and they are a free rotation. There's also some perks that each person can use, again, that can be bought by in-game gold. They've got offensive, defensive, um, and also a hero, or, well, uh, they'll eventually have heroes. Um, but each one of these perks actually has a benefit at a cost so some of them will give you increased movement speed at decreased fall damage or increased fall damage rate so there's perks on both sides and uh with that said the in-game stuff now you can play as any of the characters in their free rotation but some of the customization skins and stuff like that's what they have different anyways now as you get into the game first thing you're going to do is set up your defense every game starts the same way so there each character is going to have different uses in terms of setting up and, uh, well, instead of watching, you know, have you guys watch me dig this, I'm gonna, you know, speed this up real quick. But anyways, I'm gonna keep talking while I'm doing that. So, every character is gonna have a different role in terms of setting up defense, and you can do traps, like if you're the OP Wan Shinobi. Yeah, they did that. Um, then you can set up traps with, you know, spikes, glue, a whole bunch of other things like that, false walls, which I'm going to climb up here and show you, that actually blend into whatever block it is you place it up against to. Now, you do have to be careful that you choose the right block that you want to, otherwise it's going to be a you know, block of grass sticking down. People are going to go, wait a second, that's not right. But then other characters are more useful for offensive stuff, but can still set up radar and protection to keep track of any of these that are coming in to attack you, obviously. Because after you get set up, Obviously, the goal is to blow up the enemy cube, so you want to make sure that you can see them when they try to do that. Other characters are better at setting up defenses in terms of actually fending off people, and others are better for setting up defenses so you know where they're coming from. Now, like I said, some characters are going to be better at setting up actual defenses that are useful for shooting characters in the face. Like Tony, who has turrets. Not to be confused with Tourette's. I'm going to leave that there. Now anyways, as Tony, your idea is going to be to set up the defenses to actually protect the cube so if somebody gets into your cube area that you can stop them from doing that because they obviously are going to be trying to get into the cube. Now other game modes are actually going to have additional objectives as in like shield cubes that you have to destroy before you get there. But as you're setting up defense, I can tell you one of the most annoying things is running out of blocks, which you will do. Now, as you go and harvest more blocks and digging blocks with your digging tool, some blocks give you more blocks. So, you know, those little wood crates, you get like one. Bricks, you get nine. And then some other blocks, you can get all the way up to like 30, 40. And there's also going to be supply drops down the road that they'll drop every about 15 minutes in the game that will have about a thousand cubes. If your team picks up, you'll get to use, which is fantastic. Now, 
Other parts of the game are for setting up defense, you want to have forward outposts for your offensive characters. You don't want to just leave them high and dry, so some characters can actually drop health and ammo stations on top of the other characters who can do radar. Now again, like I said, running out of blocks is a real thing. You will run out of blocks, especially as characters who are setting up defenses, because every single block you place has a block cost. Now, the good thing is you'll have plenty of other blocks to tear down. However, you've got to be mindful that you don't tear down blocks that are going to actually be useful in your defense. So keep in mind when you're actually going out and breaking blocks to make blocks because it's kind of one of those pros and cons things, just like with the perks. So obviously don't go tearing down walls right in front of your cube, otherwise your team will not like you. Anyways, once you get all of your defenses set up and your cubes have been cubed off and covered in spikes and bombs and turrets, the next thing you're going to do is attack. And like I said earlier, other characters are better at the offensive. So, like OP1 Shinobi running over there, I can't keep up with him. <laughs> other characters are going to be really good at just kind of flying through the... I don't... How did he... Oh, you're right. He has special abilities. He can actually throw a smoke bomb and carry. Uh, Sergeant, on the other hand, has to uh, build and dig. So, I'm going to speed that up again so you're not painfully watching me dig for a good two minutes. Once you get going, you're going to want to set up forward operating bases, so to speak, with stuff like a respawn pad or other little activities where you can get your team to you. Now keep in mind, other characters are trying to do the same thing and stopping you from setting up bases as well. So, if you find one, shoot them in the face. Or however, wherever you can end up shooting them. But keep in mind, like I said, the characters are rather balanced, so if you run up on somebody with low health, they're probably going to kill you. OP1 Shinobi cyborg thing right there that I just did. Anyways, back to setting up respawn pads. The key to this is positioning. So, after you get something set up, you want to actually defend it to where they can't just run in and blow up their hard work. Because I spent, what, two hours of digging there? That's what I felt like? Anyway, keyword, positioning, like I said, if you have the better position, boom! You can drop a rocket off people's face. And then your team can actually continue setting up bases and push forward. So all about trying to find alternative methods of getting in there because sometimes, like I showed you at the very beginning, the direct approach isn't always the best idea. So strategy and all those weird things like you know, teamwork, who, who does that, actually really comes in handy here. Because one character can't do this entire thing on their own because a 1v5 is never a good thing. Yeah, I didn't want to watch him blow up. Anyways, once you get into the cube, the key is to use the dig tool. Explosives can do damage, but you're going to be doing the most damage with your dig tool. Granted, sometimes you have to just take one for the team and do as much damage as possible. Uh, kind of like I think Tony's going to do here. Oh, remember those special abilities I was talking about? Ah! Sarge throws grenades. Other characters can teleport. Some characters can increase build time, and you're going to have to look into that. As you play more characters, you'll learn more about them, and then you'll have a better understanding of... Tony, we talked about this. Anyways, you have a better understanding of what each character can use and do for your team in terms of getting to the base. Which, remember, they've been defending as well, so they have to... <laughs> Ooh, fail on the grenade. Anyways, they also have defenses set up because their goal is to stop you from attacking as well. Now, if you want to take a look at some of the characters, you can go to the actual game page and in the hero section, look at the tutorials that they have available. Now, one thing I should mention is that all characters can swim. Some can run, apparently, in the water. But uh, not all characters can climb walls. So, that's why it'd be a good idea to check out that page to see what characters you'd like to play, and if you ever wanted to unlock one in particular as you're gaining gold for playing games, you'll have a better understanding of which ones to spend the gold on. Unless, of course, you wanted to purchase them with Platinum, which is the in -game, or the uh, buy, you know, the currency that you can buy. Now, one thing they're not going to mention is that gravity does not affect ninja stars very well, as I'm about to demonstrate with this turret. Can I see that drop? A tiny, tiny little drop. Probably throw this thing across the map with relative accuracy. Anyways, as you play through and figure out which characters it is that you like to play and what role you like to do, whether it be offensive, defensive, in between, both, it doesn't really matter, uh, you'll be able to choose which ones out of the free rotation, which there's always going to be someone who is a primarily offensive, primarily defensive, and kind of an all-around character. And so you'll just have to figure out what it is that you like to play as. 
Um, and on top of that, there's a lot of really good tutorials that you can play and figure out what the basic mechanics of the game are. The best way to do it is just to get it in play. It's not difficult. It's really simple to learn. The only difficult parts are maybe understanding which defensive positions to set up in the map that you're playing particularly are. But you can always ask the community. They're usually pretty nice if they are responsive at all. Um, and other than that, if you have any questions about any of the free-to-play changes uh, from pay-to-play, there's a really nice article out there in the world, and it does a really nice job explaining what the changes were from buy-to-play to, to free-to-play. But with that said, check out the game profile page on MMOHuts.com. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button if you liked it, and whether you're here to build or destroy, this is Bakerman Brad, and gamers, block and load! And get back to gaming, of course.